not the biggest seas we paddled in, this was the wettest paddle of the trip for me so far. The short choppy seas and headwinds made for a full face spray with water dripping down the inside of my life jacket. With the milder weather this morning, I didn't gear up in my waterproof paddle jacket. Good thing air temperatures are still relatively mild. Oh, good to be protected by the island. Arriving at Sheep Island, we interrupted a couple enjoying the beach, cooking clams and hot dogs, and enjoying the sunny weather. After we got a little settled, they graciously invited us to join them. Come to find they were born and raised just across the bay near Addison, Maine. Justin and his wife, Darlene's families have been involved in lobster fishing for seven or eight generations. True Down Easters, and in what we found to be true Down Easter style, they were kind and generous in sharing their stories and food, and their part of the world. Justin is a lobsterman himself, and he and Darlene both expressed they could not imagine a better life. We feel very lucky to share this little gem of an island and experience their part of the world. As a good sunrise is invigorating to start the day, any sunset with Katie, unplugged, kaleidoscope of colors, just us to ponder life and time is the best way to end the day. After Justin and Darlene had left us on our own on Sheep Island, some other folks showed up who summer in the area. They suggested that we needed to take a paddle across the bay to Bub's Lobster Shack. Where is it exactly, I asked? Can't miss it. It's just straight across Green Shack on the bluff. They said we'd not be disappointed with the effort, and boy were they right. He's got a boat ramp. He's got it all. How you doing? I've been yeah. here pretty damn near 20 years. Yeah. Right? yeah, I think first wolf was only a couple of years old when I came. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Like the, this it's is like, our first time up. I'm from Minnesota. He's ah, from Washington hey. State. Yeah. Always welcome here. Oh, thank you. Oh thank you. Gosh, you get cooler with you and haul up a seat. And like I tell everybody, <laughs> just make believe you own the place. Oh, there you go. People look at you funny, you just look right back at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, this was the old the Bill Stone quarry. Oh, Went right wow. from Tumble Down Dick to Port Chabra. Okay. Um, yep. All the rock, that makes sense. Oh yeah, it's all cut. And, yeah, they make yeah. gravestones, they shipped it all over the place. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It yeah. closed in the early 1900s. Yeah. 
1700s. Yeah, there's so many quarries up here. We've seen oh, them yeah. all the way this up. Oh, yeah, this was diamond granite. Wow. Yep, they polished and done everything. I found pieces of polished and stuff. Nice. Hmm. This is what yeah, used to be there. This radio. This was the factory, the main factory. And on that corner right over there was the boarding house. There's solar holes still there. Okay. Up on that corner. What we done, we just moved the road closer. Yeah. Like this, when we was doing bait, you come down just when you turn this corner, you pretty much come like this all yeah. hole now instead of way out around over mm. here. And this was hundred years. Ago? This would have been back the eighteen hundreds. Oh 18, wow! Okay. Late eighteen hundreds. That's impressive. They yeah. still have photos of that. And uh, they had their own post office, schoolhouse. Uh, they had pretty much. It was called the Lotville. Delotville? Yep, John Delot. Okay. He's a guy that okay. had it, yep, Pleasant River Granite Company. Uh, we have, well, what they mainly pick for you, crab meat sandwiches and stuff, like eelgrass crabs. They're just little ones. I can show you when we yeah. get them. They're just little ones. Okay. You know, they're sweet of meat, but the bigger ones are easy to pick. I call yeah. them rock crabs, the Jonas, or whatever you want to call okay. them. Okay. You know, they'd be something like that. They're just, but they're, they're different crabs. Yeah, we've noticed the restaurant saying, oh, we have crab in today, we can't usually get it. And, yeah. You know, but we've seen it in the last week at different places. Yeah, I've seen it go from, well, okay, back years ago, it was only a lot, $10 pound, looking like that, picked out right in the dish mm -hmm. for you. And those pound now it's 30 I think they said down just how many lobs are they getting in a pot right, right now they ain't getting half a lot not much they, uh, well that boat just left he his trap's been set in a week yeah, oh wow yeah we had three crates from uh, that's down there 90 pounds of crate but they've been setting for a week that's a long time yeah. and and a good and a good year what a would be the year, difference? well we used to do Oh, Christ, been years since uh, we've done that, but we used to do 90 to 100 crates a day here. I had 13 boats. Oh, wow. See, logs is like it cold. Yeah. That's why they come in here to shed, and then they go right back offshore. Yeah. That's why when you see boats going, well, see, like uh, in the spring, they come in, mm -hmm. they shed. And that's when you start fishing in June, July, first June. You start throwing your traps in, catch them before they, before they go just back keep up. Moving your traps further you out. Because uh, they're going offshore. Okay. And Matthew, you see, he had a bigger boat and he fished off for 25 miles. Oh, wow. Doing uh, 25 trap trolls. Yeah. yeah, you know, and the mm -hmm. thing with mussels, you don't, you ain't supposed to take the ones that stick out of water. The sunlight shines on, they get that, whatever it is. Uh, kill you really the red tide whatever it is uh, yeah, yeah from the heat and yeah so you know you take your tides and big tides usually that's when the people that want muscles i'll go get them for them old people or something like yes sir i'll get you some big tide and i'll run over in back island something they're all still underwater mm. you know they've never been out of water they're oh, still okay. underwater but you can get at them okay uh, you know what i mean all right they, so you're picking them at low tide then you're going out low tide yep yeah. You take a big tide, 12 foot or something, big yep. thing. Well, yep. the muscle is there, never been out of water in okay. since yeah. they were born, you know, since they were the seed folk. Well, show us your. Yeah, show us the gig. Oh, yeah, jump up there. Yeah, you can get that one. Yeah, that's right. Can't buy these anymore around here, oh man. We no. bought them all up. These are candies my grandmothers used oh my to have. I remember having these. Well, yeah, we had them here for a while. And I bought them, I don't know. I, well, when I quit drinking that 10 years ago, I started eating these candies. So good. And I bought them right out. No place you can get them now, they get them on the computer. Mm. These are like, you know what these are like? Yep. Yeah. They're like the brown My grandmother type. had the green ones, the white ones, and the pink ones. Yep, that's what I try to tell them. They can't and get them anymore. No, they, yeah. The factory closed a couple years ago. Yep, they don't want them. See, I'm a guy that lives on sugar. <laughs> you would never yeah. know it. I do, you I live on You would never know sugar. it. Go right ahead. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Okay. And then I have time to do this. You take, see, like one. Yeah. That would be a male. You know how to tell male from female. Mm -mm. Okay, see these right here? Mm -hmm. That's a male. What do you think we should do? Two, three? Male right there. Uh, well, you know, if you do pound and a half, is 
probably one a piece. Yeah. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. like, see, that's about a pound and a half. All mm -hmm. right, we'll take two of those then. Yeah. You know, and that'd be, that's quite a bit of meat. You know. Okay. There's a female right there, just what I was looking for to show you. See hers? Mm-hmm. That's flat. Okay. And the male, but the male is big. And they and they don't care harvesting oh, female to male. Mm. Only nope, well, only if it has eggs. Do. If you find one is egged, seeing the tail's wider on a female. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And if it's egged, you have to be an ounce of this, mm. this mm -hmm. fin right here, and that will be on your medio. What you do, you cut that right there yeah. into that fin if it was an egg. Okay. And then what? Then you throw it back over. Oh, throw it back and over. no one can have that because it's been notched. Uh, see, see uh, by rights, anything, they ain't even supposed to be a hair out of place on this. Mm -hmm. If there okay. is, you're supposed to be notch it. Okay. Mm -hmm. The way I usually do, I just take a knife. If I find one with an egg on it or something, I'll mm -hmm. take a knife and I'll just cut a good V. Uh, that right there will grow back in fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And the wardens have a rig that they just take, it's oh, like see. a pair of pliers, ting, they'll take a nice big V right out of that. Mm -hmm. But you don't hurt the so, wasps. So she can never be harvested then? No. She can, she, yeah, then okay. she'll never be able to be harvested okay. because she's an egg bearing. See, and when we're pounding, and, and when we're taking other pounding. Pounding. It took me a bit to tease out above what pounding is. This is where they build a pond that is within the tidal range, and they raise the lobster penned in. So when he says pounding, I'm not sure if he means ponding or pounding like a dog pound. We have to look at them all because uh -huh. the females will egg up in the pound because the water's nice and warm oh, and the lobsters okay. are all in together. Yeah. And then so the state, like Billy set up with them so that they'll buy back the female leggers and they, mm. we crate them up, bring them down here and then the wardens come down and we and help them. them. They even knock them, we chuck them right off oh. the wall for you. So okay. keeps the lobster supply going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's see them. So these are the two lobsters that Bub picked out for us. So we're cooking lobsters on the beach, just like the locals do. Went across the bay to a guy named Bub, watched the fishing boat, unload their lobsters to him just as we pulled in. He picked out two nice one and a half pound lobsters so we built a fire breaking it down to coals wrapped it in seaweed and we'll see we'll check them here in just a little bit about 15 20 minutes cooking time Slight chaos, people. Slight chaos. The wheels We've survive. never done this before. We've never done this before, so, you know. All right, you ready for decadence? Yes. This is incredible. Oh. Mm. Right? Crazy good. Crazy good. And why did you say we only need two of these? <laughs> Because that's what Bub says. And we said, uh, we haven't been kayaking. We're ravenous all the time. Oh my gosh, that was one lobster tail down. So good, so good. Now we go for the claws. He wouldn't even take a tip from us. Honest money. He said it might be the money that keeps us out of trouble, so he gave us back our tip. <laughs> Such a uh, nice guy. Look at that. He did us right. There is some... There is some meat in those claws. That's beautiful. 
I know people who eat lobster all the time at home are probably watching me painfully take this apart, but you know, I am a novice. <laughs> that, no, that's you. That's supposed to be the best part, the sweetest. Oh. We might have to visit Bubsy in tomorrow. Oh my god, so good. So good. Not at all of that one. Alright, pause for you, John. Everyone has said Bob is the nicest guy around. The locals, the snowbirds, mm -hmm. all say he's the nicest dude around. And I have to concur, like, he had a genuine niceness about him cares about where he grew up. Not only that, but he was open yeah. to anybody. Yeah. The only negative thing I have to say about Bob is he said two lobsters. He should have said five. <laughs> so I could do three easy. Okay, you have to go back. Yeah, I'm getting smoked out. I don't know how to help. <laughs> well, I can help with that. After the decadent lobster feast we enjoyed last night, we couldn't resist a return visit to Bub's today. We were lucky enough to pull up to the dock just as Bub's nephew was unloading the catch from his fishing boat. He kindly brought us on board to check on a couple of pots in the bay. Job on these lobsters, they definitely fulfilled. So, so, so good. 